Hi, my name is Dong and I'm an animator based in Japan. Today, let's take a look at how the compositing process is done within the Japanese animation industry using After Effects. I've provided a link to the project files below, so follow along. Alright, let's make this scene look really cool. First, we need to get some third-party plugins. Links are down below. First is F's plugins, and you can find this on the creator Rifle's GitHub. Download the latest version here. Next is a couple of plugins from OLM site, including OLM Smoother and Color Keep. After that, navigate to your After Effects folder, find the plugins folder, and drag them in there. For the OLM plugins, make sure you select the right version and drag it in the plugin folder. Before we start, let's change some settings in After Effects. Go to File, Project Settings, and in the Time Display Style tab, check Frames. We're going to be working in frames when we composite animation. Now let's take a look at our project files. We have the layout here. We need this to set up our camera. Then we have the timesheet, and we need this to time our animation later. Lastly, we have a folder with all our animation drawings. And don't forget the BG. These are all target files with 24 bits per pixel, meaning there is no alpha channel. Also, notice the resolution of our files. 1684 by 1190. This is a pretty standard resolution, although there might be differences between studios. You may also choose to animate in a higher resolution in your own projects. Also be aware that our animation cells are drawn with aliased lines. This is important as it allows us to color the key parts of the drawing. The shadows are also this magenta color, as they are meant to be a mask that we have to deal with in our composite. Alright, let's drag in our layout image into After Effects. Then we'll right click it and create a new comp from selection. Let's go into that comp settings and uh, change around some settings. Double check that the frame rate is 24 frames per second. And looking at our timesheet, we can see that the length of our scene is 4 seconds long. So make sure that the duration is correct. At 24 frames per second, 96 frames should be our duration. We'll also change the composition name to cell plus BG. Remember to keep organized. Let's create a new comp and call it camera. Let's also change the size of our workspace. The resolution we use here will be the standard that we use for all the composites for every scene on this project. I like to use a size of 1680 by 1000 pixels. It's an industry standard. Let's drag the cell plus BG comp into the camera one and figure out the camera here. In this scene, the camera is rotated, note the red frame. So let's rotate the cell plus BG comp so that it matches up. If you have camera moves like pans, you would work them out here. Let's create one more comp and call it render. We'll change the resolution to what we want to render as, so usually 1920 by 1080. Let's drag the camera comp into here, and we have to upscale the camera comp so that the frame matches with the edges of the render comp. To do this, let's find the detail preserving upscale effect from the effect and preset menu, and drag that into the camera comp. Then increase the scale and move it around to get it to fit properly. This is optional, but to make this step easier, we can go into the camera comp and drag in this frame template I made into the scene. Then we can resize this to fit the layout template, and then right click on it and select guide layer so it doesn't show up outside of the comp. This lets us clearly see what our camera sees. Alright, there we go. We have our composition hierarchy set up. To organize things, I like to rename the comp by adding the number 1 in front of the render comp, 2 to camera, and 3 to cell plus BG so they show up in our project window clearer. Okay, let's get our animation cells imported. Go to File, Import File, and click on the A1 file and make sure that the target sequence option is checked. Hit Import 
and hit OK. Let's make a new comp from our imported sequence and get to work. First, we need to remove the white background since we don't have an alpha channel. We can use the F's color key effect to do this. The color is already set up to key out the white by default. Note that in anime, we never use pure white colors during cell painting so that we can key out the background in this step. The whites of the eyes are always slightly off white, never appear white. We can then go into our comp settings and change the color of the background to make the lines easier to see. Let's make a new comp from the A comp and rename it to keep it organized. It's a good habit to have. Now let's get the shadow working. Make a copy of the A comp and on the top layer, let's key out the magenta color using F's color key effect again. Use the eyedropper to pick out the magenta color. On the bottom layer, we want to key everything out except the magenta color. To do so, let's use the OLM color keep effect. We'll turn off the effect temporarily, use the eyedropper to pick out the magenta color, and turn the effect back on. We also need to add some effects to our shadow layer. The first one we need is F's max, which expands the outline of our layer. I'll set this to a value of 3. This is needed so that we don't have any gaps between the shadow and character. We also don't want the shadow shape to be expanded where it doesn't touch the character, so let's use this set matte effect set to the layer's alpha channel. Then let's add a slight blur. We'll use the Gaussian blur effect at a value of 2 for this. To color the shadow, we can use the fill effect and change the color to a dark gray color. Finally, we can lower the opacity of the layer. Open the Transform tab and set the opacity to around 50%. To finalize, we need to anti-alias our lines. Let's create a new adjustment layer and apply the OLM Smoother effect to it. If you want more smoothing, you can add more copies of the OLM Smoother effect. Okay, let's go back to our cell plus BG comp and drag in our A comp into it. Let's also drag in our BG while we're at it. We can hide our layout layer now. We won't be needing it. To time our animation, I'm going to pull up our timesheet and reference it. We're looking at the middle column here for the timing. Right click the A cell animation comp and enable time remapping for it. You can delete the last keyframe for the time remap and then drag out the comp to match the length of the timeline. Then I'll create some extra keyframes, one for each drawing. So six keyframes in total. We can then select everything, right click, and hit toggle hold keyframe. Then we have to change the time remap value for each keyframe. The second keyframe will have a value of one, the third keyframe a value of two, and so on. Then we drag the keyframes out so they match our timesheet. Drawing 2 is exposed from frame 37, drawing 3 from frame 40, drawing 4 at 43, and so on. Alright, we can now go to the render comp and check out our animation. This is a pretty simple composite and will work for a lot of shows that have that simpler graphic look. Now let's take a look at some common effects in anime and how to do them. A lot of shows have this gradient effect over the cell layer. And to do that, we go into our A cell comp, grab the rectangle tool and select the fill to be a gradient. We can then adjust the gradient and lower the opacity for the start and end point of that gradient. We can then use the selection tool to adjust the gradient so that the dark side is near the bottom and the light one near the top. Expand the controls pane by clicking the button at the bottom left, and then under track mat, set it to our A cell layer. Put our shape layer on top of our cell layer and re-enable that cell layer. 
Then under the blending mode, set it as soft light. And there we go. Using the same technique, we can light the whole scene. In the cell plus BG comp, we can make a gradient shape layer, adjust the color so that the white is at full opacity, and angle it so that the white side is at the top and black at the bottom. Then by setting the blend mode to multiply, we can darken the bottom of the scene. We can also add a little flare effect. To do this, we select the rectangle tool and change it to an ellipse and change the fill to a solid color. I used a light blue here. Then draw a big ellipse near the top of the screen. Let's go down to the transform option on the shape layer and lower the opacity to around 60% or so. Then let's add a blur effect. The fast box blur works well here. We'll set the value to around 200. Then in the blending mode, we can set it as color dodge. To further adjust this, we can add the hue saturation effect and adjust the saturation and lightness as well as the color to your choosing. Next, I'll show you guys how to create a cool, simple anime style filter that you see in a lot of shows. Let's drag our old adjustment layer back into the camera comp. Click on this button here to enable the adjustment layer. And then we need to add some effects. First, the color balance effect and lower the saturation to around minus 5. Next is the Gaussian Blur at 2 blurriness. And then the Sharpen effect at a value of 5. Get a new adjustment layer and enable it. Add the Gaussian Blur effect at a value around 60. And set the Blending Mode as Hard Light. Then lower the Opacity to around 10%. The shortcut for opacity is T, by the way. Duplicate that adjustment layer and lower the blurriness to around 30 and the opacity at 5%. Then set the mode to color burn. Duplicate it again, set the blur to 15, opacity to 50, and the mode to darken. Duplicate that layer one last time and drag in the exposure effect and set the offset to around minus 0.25 and set the blurriness to 100 and opacity to 15% and the mode to color dodge. Now let's take out our adjustment layers, right click on them and hit pre-compose. We'll call it filter and we move all the layers into that comp. Make sure to select the pass through option and then we can adjust the opacity of the filter comp to adjust the strength of our effect. Lastly, we can do some color grading. Let's take an adjustment layer and enable it. Then we add some effects. Once I like to use our Lumetri color, hue saturation, and brightness and contrast. We can adjust these to whatever best fits the scene. Here I lower the contrast a bit, change the temperature so that the scene is a bit warmer, up the saturation, and adjust the lightness and hue of specific colors. You can really play around with these. Alright, let's export this. Looks nice, eh? Compositing is a really big subject, and if there's any interest in this, we can explore the subject further. But that's it for today, thanks to everyone who is supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, links are down below. Patrons get some unique content to them every month. Other than that, check out my social media, Twitter for my day-to-day, -day, and Instagram if you just want to see my art. Alright, have a great day.